Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. my best friend tony what's, what's, going up, on? what's going on buddy you are definitely not going to be my best friend here in about 10 minutes what do you I, think? i'm used to it <laughs> you, you should be hey um i'm pretty excited about today um uh one of my favorite people on earth not just in the world in the hair world but on earth is is on the podcast today and uh i just i can't wait to kind of chat her up uh ditto dude we're sitting here pre-talk and i mean i think we're all like kind of like got moisture in our eyes you know just just because allergies she's, allergies yeah, what well, is allergies? She's, I like the it? yeah, it's allergies, it's allergies, right? Yeah, yeah, she's just a, an incredible human being. Yeah, incredible. Um, today our guest is Elizabeth Fay. Um, and she, uh, oh, I have we have to we, we have to ask her about it. She's getting married here soon, so I wonder if she's going to keep the Fay moniker. But we'll get into that. Um, so we're talking to Elizabeth Fay, and uh, you know, I mean, we're just. I don't want to say indebted, but just grateful for her to, uh, that she's in our life. Um, we've been to uh, two hair love retreats, and they are absolutely positively life changing. Um, you are aware and understand yourself a little bit better leaving than when you arrived. One hundred percent. You were spot on. I mean, I, you know, here I, I'm in my fifties. I had no clue. You know, it's, I've been there once. Last year uh, was totally life changing for me, and I. I didn't expect that. And when I left, I mean, my perspective on my health, my mental health, my just, just in life in general. And it was just so incredible. It, it, it was amazing. And I mean, and, and, and we're looking at Elizabeth here and I can tell her that I'm still to this day. We talk about the breath work that we did, you know, that, that, and, and I don't even know, I think it was an hour each session, but that hour session of breath work that, that we had and how life-changing that was and, and how we still talk about it. And we, I, I talked to my clients about it. Oh, dude, my, my, my young me is so happy. You know? <laughs> he was so <laughs> miserable before. So <laughs> exactly. But nah, it was incredible. All right. I think people want to hear Elizabeth. They're sick of hearing us. She yeah, can get in. Always. What's up, Miss Elizabeth Faye? Welcome back, man. Welcome. Welcome back to your day off. I'm so excited to be here. I just absolutely adore you guys. And it's always like talking to a good friend. We had to literally like stop speaking before I'd be like, fine, fine, fine. We're going to record now because we just start talking. So it's just like being home. Hi. It's pretty incredible. I mean, I, I was thinking that like we could, I mean, I, we probably talked for 30 minutes before, before we jumped on, you know, but, but, <laughs> um, but dude, just, I am like, I am so proud of you. And, and I don't, Oh, I'm going to get emotional. Oh, damn, we're three minutes in. I'm going to get emotional. Dude, from that girl that we met who was 26 years old and sat down and talked to us about how she had all these, all these, and, 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 and I, I don't want to overstate, I don't want to understate it, but, but from what I would guess was a damaged 26 year old girl who had all these dreams and not just for her, but her dreams were to change the industry. And now to see you a few years later in everything, even above what you even talked to us at 26, like what you've done for yourself, what you've done for the industry, what you've done and how many lives you've changed can't be understated, man. It, it's just, I go back to like sitting with her at premiere a few years ago and like, it, it's amazing. You're not even the same person. And like, it's just incredible, man. Not at all. It's wild. The ripple effect is wild. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It was, it was, uh, it, listen, it, it was, it was crazy to kind of, I, I go back to that. Every time I think of you, Elizabeth, I go back to that, to that conversation we had, you know, you know at, what was that 2018, I think. Yeah, 2018. 2018. And like, it was the first time that we had met. We weren't really sure about, not about who you are, but like who you were, you know, we just, it was the first time we had met, you know? Yeah. And, and then like to kind of fast forward, you know, this many few years um, forward, it's just, it's, it, it's been an incredible journey to watch. And like, I, I, I proudly say, Hey, that's my friend Elizabeth now, you know, from the girl I didn't know. And now like, you know, it's just amazing. I don't know. I'm just rambling on now. 
but but yeah congratulations that's uh that's very cool and i i also on a personal note is that um i watch your ted talk which i thought was incredible you know and and with the ted talk what I really, really liked about it, and, and I tried to write it, like I wrote like a little thing about it. I tried to write it, but I don't know if it quite conveyed the way that I felt. Maybe I can speak it through. Is that so many times in in the history of how media, how TV, how movies has portrayed our industry isn't always the most positive kind of thing. It's either catty, gross, or or insignificant or or whatever. But but what you shared in that in that TED talk, like that's the industry that I, that I'm proud to stand by. And, and, and we don't get to see that too often um, outside of the industry, right? People outside the industry don't get to see that side of the industry so much, but I'm just, I'm just, thank you so much for bringing that to the world. Thank you for bringing that up. That is, um, you know, there's certain things that, Oh, that have just truly been a passion project. And, for me, I was like, okay, we have this message of hairstylists change the world. And I've done a really good job of infiltrating the industry with the message. And I'm never going to stop. Like, I mean, even back pre hair love, I did four years of workshops. I started every workshop with, I believe that hairdressers changed the world. Like it's been, and then I would say, I know it because someone changed my world. And that's been my, you know, thing where I've shared my story and said, this is why it matters what you do. So let's, when I did hair, like, let's be really good at hair. So you can do the thing that matters the most. And then when I only coach to business, I'd say, let's be really good at business. So you can do the thing that matters most. And now I obviously do a lot of personal development as well as business, but it's like all of it, right? All of those, like you have to be well in those areas so you can do the thing that matters most. But when we made this movie, I said, this is going to be really cool because we have a documentary called Hair Sales Change the World because non-hairdressers are going to see this. Obviously, that is not going to directly impact my life in a positive way. It is going to directly impact the industry, which will then positively impact all of our lives, my life. Like It's truly a mission thing because I was like, if non-hairdressers see this, it elevates the perspective of what it means to be a hairstylist. And, or a barber or a nail, right? Like, obviously I'm in the hair and barber world, but like that carries to our estheticians and our nail artists. Like it's that same, those beauty services. And I, I said, this is going to shift the perspective. And obviously the global message is that everyone can learn something from those sacred relationships that they all have a tie to, and they can bring some of that into their own lives. But I have been blown away by the non hairdresser. So the TED is that too. I said, how do we share this in a global way where hopefully a million people plus see this movie? And obviously we want the hairdresser to know that they're important, but we want their clients to know. We want their neighbors to know. We want their mama to know. We want their, right? They're all those people. And the conversations I've had, Corey, have surprised me. These are all age ranges, like older people, younger people, mostly non-industry, obviously. And people come to me. I did not expect people to cry. People came to me with tears in their eyes and they're like, I love my hairdresser. I just sent them a text and said how much I appreciate them, how they were there for me through my divorce or my dad dying or my sister, this and that. And I just like, the humanness and those relationships, like I have heard just some of the most beautiful stories and I leave these rooms just like, I don't know where this message is going, but it's going up and it's going to help our industry. And that's my mission. And it's been so freaking cool to have non-hairdressers see it. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we've watched it several times. Even my whole household's watched it. You know what I mean? And uh, you can't help but feel that way when you watch it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And uh, with the documentary, if I'm um, uh, Elizabeth does like a, in the middle of the documentary, like a, I, I, what would you say? A meditation, I guess. Um, yeah, it's a meditation. meditation. And and right at the end of the meditation, if you if you if you pause it really quick, you might see Tony and mine's face right there <laughs> in the crowd there. We're, we're like right there. I go, oh, that, oh no. Before I could say it, we're gone. <laughs> but uh, but no, it was really I had you rewind it because I blinked. I'm like, I know, oh. no, there, oh, okay. <laughs> Your cameo. <laughs> our cameo. <laughs> oh, yeah, just our just our O. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just our O. Um 
Yeah, no, but the documentary is like so cool. And the and the and listen, if you're listening in and you haven't seen the documentary, um, it's available on Prime. Um, it's something that you'll be really, really proud of um as a hairstylist. It's something that you'll be really, really proud of as an industry. Um, and uh, I, I highly recommend that you watch it. Uh the TED, I guess it's available on YouTube, right? Yeah, it's totally free because it's yeah. a TED talk. Yeah. yeah, yeah yep, so you just TED. hairstylists change the world. Let's That's look it, it up. That's it. And then you'll uh, you'll see Elizabeth there on stage uh, doing her thing. Um, was that was was TED talk? Was that like a, was that like a life goal of yours? OK, so, Ted, I won't do a huge time suck on this. I did. I'm doing a whole episode. that will be on mine about what that experience is like. So let's just say this is like your big goal to do. I'm going to do a whole episode in June that will break that down. But um, it was two years ago, actually, when we were in Greece, two summers ago, um, I had been working with a coach who specializes in purpose. That's all she does is help you get into your purpose. It's only like one or two calls and she's done with you. And I was writing my book, which I'm still writing. And I was writing my documentary. They're big projects. They take a long time. The movie took four years. The TED took two. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to do projects this big without really dropping into my heart and multiple times and checking like am I aligned is this where I want to go like what's my mission like you know both of these are self-funded big projects like I want to make sure like are we telling the story that's the most important to tell and it's like any creative process like sometimes you don't know where this is going you're a little lost in the weeds and then the vision comes clear and then you get lost again so I was working with her and she works with TED coaches and when I was telling her my message and what I wanted to the industry, she was like, this is a beautiful Ted talk. Like you need to do this. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, they, cause they're really weird about letting coaches on stages, um, self, anything self-promotional a hairdresser's by no means like, um, in their eyes, maybe like an inventor or a scientist. So I was like, I got a few things against me. I'm a hairdresser and a coach. Like that's like, how am I going to get on a Ted stage? And she's like, you have a really cool concept that is simple and potent. And it's Ted's whole thing is an idea we're sharing. So it's an interesting thought, even though I didn't invent anything, it's a different way to look at something that we all know about. And so she said, I actually love your message. And she said, I think that you should try to get it on a TED stage. So I tried and got no's a few times and I just kept trying and I really wanted to do it where I live. I love where I live. I love the Red Rocks, but also the school um, that I spoke this at, it's a huge amphitheater where they do Broadway theater and it's famous. It's out in the Red Rocks. And um I was sent to a performing arts school here as a troubled youth. I was sent to a lot of schools. This is one of the schools I was actually sent to. So this had a personal tie to me that would meant a lot to me. And actually I sang on this stage when I was 14 and fucked up and got so, I started crying and I just walked off the stage. But that school I really loved. I loved the Red Rock. So I just said, you know what? I'm not going to apply to a bunch of other locations. I want to do it here in this way. You know me. I'm so heart driven. Like I want it to be done in a way that feel like it's not just about getting on the TED stage. It's about doing the right message at the right time in the right place. So I just kept trying for it until it went through. And it's, you know, it's a lot of work with all the coaching and the writing and the all the things just for a five minute talk. It's like so much work, but it was a cool process. That's pretty cool. That's again, dope. Yeah. Once again, it was like, it just, just so just gleaming with pride for you, you know, or, you know, just so proud of you and, 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 and everything. And that it took us like that, that it took the journey from that 26, that broken 26 year old girl that we knew to kind of, to kind of be able to do that and, and to, and to kind of stand there. That was awesome. Again, you, you make me nothing but proud and not just as a friend, but, but, um, but also as just a member of the industry with us, I, I'm just, mm delighted for you and, and, and delighted for for what you're sharing and, and and absolutely absolutely love that hey so you brought up greece um what's going on in greece in june here in a couple of weeks that's actually where we decided to get married was uh, two years ago in greece we were like we should do this like we should make this happen yeah so i get married in two weeks you guys what that's so crazy oh. where are you getting married in greece Santorini on a cliff at sunset by an old windmill and a woman's going to play the harp and Papa Jeff is going to marry us. <gasps> he is. 
Papa oh Jeff. Tell Papa Jeff. I know. Jeff. And it'll be the most woo-woo ceremony. You know us. They'll be like smoke clearing and intentions and all the things. It'll hey, look, cool. if we get to go out to, you know, hair love this 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 year, you know, uh, I got a new best friend. <laughs> Papa Jeff. Always. Always did. <laughs> Unless oh, you don't even know, like when we're at hair love, like Tony and Jeff, they, they like disappear. They leave me in the back and just like go hiking. They disappear and go hiking and you know, talk about Juniper or whatever they talk about. So good. He, okay. When he was at my house the other day, he actually was bringing me Juniper, Pine and Sage because I was making, we're making bundles for our retreaters and you know, they have to dry out and stuff. So he, he brought it from his land and you text me and said, give him a really long, awkward hug. He thought that was so funny. Right. That's a, we love, <laughs> dude, Jeff's just the best. Yeah. <laughs> That's the best. We, we 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 don't want to do hair love. We want to do Jeff love. You know, right. Jeff love treat or something. You know, it basically is like that's why it all. I mean, you know, if you watch the movie, you'll know why hair love got started. A lot of it has to do with the industry, and then how my dad introduced me to a lot of things. It, yeah. it, it's amazing. So and uh, us, <laughs> <laughs> and us exactly. exactly. All of us yeah, exactly. Hey, when is hair love this year? September 9th through the thirteenth. And it's back in Zion. Oh, what? that's so cool. Oh, I know. Uh, Zion. I mean, it's probably one of the most amazing places that I've ever been. Yeah. I mean, it's it is beautiful. Are you going so to the same? same uh... mm -mm. So it's at our 2019 venue. It's a mansion. It's a big house. Um. And everyone, we're not doing any glamping this year because it's a, it's intimate like our 2018 was. Every year has been different. That's just the truth. Like if you ask anyone who's been to our retreat, they're like, it's different than last year. It's like the same but different. Like I'm like, every year it is. Like, yeah. welcome. <laughs> but like um, it's got core hair love elements in every retreat. But like, you know, we've switched venues actually every year too. But it's our 2019 venue. It's fun. It has a pool. It's right by the river. Um but everyone can be in the house because it's it's not a huge retreat this year. That's pretty cool. So what um where do uh where do I, where do we find information about it? I'll give you guys the link. But hairloveuniversity.com. I think it's slash retreat, but hairloveuniversity.com and you can go there and oh uh, yeah, I'll give you guys the link. It'll be awesome. That, listen, I cannot recommend it enough. If you, if you guys have, I'm sure you've heard about it, but uh, but but if you want to do it, this is the year to do, it. especially because it's gonna be smaller, so I it'll know. be a lot more intimate. So it'll be like not that it's even big; it's never that big. It and always it, feels tiny, but um, you know, I have changed so much through hair love, and hair love has changed so many people. It's changed me, and every year has been a different experience. I mean, COVID changed us, mm -hmm. and I don't know about you. I've just been craving depth, not width. like in my business. I'm like, it's not about like bigger, bigger, better, better go. Like that doesn't turn me on. And if it does turn someone on, someone on that's so great, like no judgment, but I just like, it's just that impact. It's like when a life has changed and I really sat with, um, what is it about hair love that I love? What is it about hair love that changes lives? And I just like, if you strip it down to those roots, those core elements, you know, it's the well-beingness mixed with the business, mixed with the craft, mixed with the community. It's the way we teach. It's the, you know, and it's always intimate no matter what, but, um, the first few, few years were smaller and I do smaller events too. And I just was like, well, what if we kind of mix my favorite parts, the community's favorite parts together into an experience that has like the best of the hair love things, but also with more intimacy and we're not even doing a big stage this year. Like it's not about the stage. It's not about the lights. It's not about 40 educators and influencers, which I love having there and there'll still be some, but it's really about, you know, the transformation. It's about what causes transformation in someone's finances, in their business, in their body, in their mental health, in their craft, and just like keeping it pure like that and will there be years it's big again of course I'm sure but like that's just what was calling to me this year for whatever reason I just trust myself like when I know something I'm just like okay this is where we're going hey I, I tell you what I mean Corey and I we talked about it all the way home from the last time I mean it it changed us I mean it literally like I said before my perspective of everything shifted 
you know it was it was so beautiful yeah and shift it in a beautiful way you know normally like when change happens it's because you're at that proverbial like you know bottom of the or your bottom right and but it doesn't it's not your bottom that you're shifting with it's 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 it's, it's kind of your height in which you're shifting and which is which is kind of, mm. which is kind of a a, a a way to a way to look at it right yeah yeah i i can't recommend it more uh, enough you know it's yeah. just if you have the opportunity to to be able to go to this thing i'm telling you <laughs> make it happen you know what's amazing too and like and like i mean we have a goal today but i don't think we're going to get to it elizabeth what's amazing is that the friendships that have come from hair love like like we've worked with Lindsay smith like she came in and she emceed our pressy poe event um a couple months ago and um and then we're we're actually we have a call with her after you today actually we um we're we're, we're going to be a part of her her program too so it's not you know the networking is like is incredible but like it's no longer like business to business networking it's like friend to friend networking mm-hmm. you know and, and like that's 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 kind of that's been our big takeaway aside from like the breath work and stuff you know but it, it's what carries on and it's this relationships and those friendships that you make along the way you know, and, and, and I'm going to say something and you're going to hate me for it, Elizabeth, but, but, but I stand by it. I stand by it. Is <laughs> oh that, no. Oh yes, no. You're going to hate this because you've already <laughs> scolded me a couple of times about it, but I'm telling you, there's something to it is that two years ago at hair love retreat, when we were in Zion, it was really uncomfortable and it was really hot. Right. But people, people bond and struggle. That's why, like, when you're in the military, your best friends are the ones that you went to boot camp with. It's not the ones that you served with. It's the one that you went to boot camp with. And, and, and I think struggle is really, really important. And I think struggle is um, in, in getting comfortable with that struggle and, getting, and, and having someone to bond with. You're never going to bond deeper than with the people that you struggled with. Okay, I don't hate you for this. So this is what I'll say, because this is a philosophy that's part of you know, transformative experiences to a certain extent, but I didn't roast your asses on purpose, but the hiking, that's why actually we came back to Zion is the hiking is actually an important part of transformation because it pushes you to, cause here's the truth. We have great hair education and great business and financial education at hair love. Why does no one talk about it? Well, because it's really great, but the parts that stick with them are the people, are the hikes, are the breath work, is the personal development. And so people think, oh my God, there's no business, there's no hair. I'm like, there is. That's just not the part of your experience that is as impactful. I could have the best business class that exists in the industry at Hair Love, and it says something that it was still more impactful. The people you met, the way you bonded, the conversations you had, the hike you went on. So it's actually why we bring in hiking and certain elements like that. It's also why, because we've had different events that are more, dare I say the word comfortable, like a little more, um, like we did hair love clubs, which were really cool, actually. But like people are at hotels and stuff, and it's really cool. But there is something to being like, you're in your own land. There's nowhere else that like to go. You're all together, right? Like it's not a hotel where there's a bunch of other people, which is still a cool experience. It would still be amazing. But there is a magic when you go through an experience with people together, like girls camp, boys camp, church camp, whatever camp, right? And um, it's actually part of the reason why we're going back to Zion is there's that land that land is just special and it holds a medicine that like is so good and the hiking pushes you in an element so yes I I don't disagree with you because we do things like that on purpose but I was like I didn't make it that hot outside on purpose (laughs) (laughs) I I gotta tell you I loved it I loved it because because the other thing that it did too Elizabeth is that it took us out of the tents right because because you know when we were there there is some downtime there but like but like I mean for the lack of a better word, you were miserable in your tent. So like, I would much rather be miserable in community where I think everybody, everybody got together. Everybody, nobody left the community element of that weekend because there was no place to hide to, right? If there was an air conditioned tent or there was actually the tent that we were in, the big one was the air conditioned one. So it forced community. I think that it was a brilliant idea. Not, not that you had any control over it, but, but I don't hate it at all. You know, and, and I think that, I think that, again the strong bonds that we've made through hair love have been because of because of that you know like it does it does forge like the people who hike together or go through things together i mean they are like 
still to this day, I can look back at 2018, 2019 relationship, 20, you know, each year. And you're like, oh, they bonded here. They went through this together. Like it's those um, connections. So, and Here's that's crazy. Fun. Is yeah. like when we did the, when we did the hike, like by the time you get to the chains on the, on angels landing, like it's single file. So whoever's in front of you and whoever's behind you is your team, right? Like yeah. whether they're, I had no idea that Lindsay Smith was part of the, um, was part of the group. Oh, really? <laughs> no, like she just became my best friend because we had to rely on each other to get up the hill. And That's then, so you cool. know, and then as we came down, well, I mean, obviously at that time we knew that we were together, but, but when we first linked up, you like what I did there? When we first linked up, we, um, <laughs> when we first linked up, I had no clue. Like this was just the person that was, you know, um, That's cool. a single file for me, but, but yeah. And then, like I said, we've, we've had an incredible bond and incredible relationship uh, since then. Yeah. yeah, I have to tell you, and then we'll get yeah. to our episode. <laughs> okay, I I had a vision for hair love, and I I claim the right to change my mind at any time, so no one's allowed to hold me to this because I unapologetically will change my fucking mind if I feel like it. But um, <laughs> so I've done this long enough to kind of like I've hosted many huge events, many small events. I used to do workshops. I've hosted small masterminds. So I have some experience in causing human transformation, but this is kind of my vision. Is, you know how Tony Robbins has signature experiences that are like similar experiences, right? They're the same. Right. And I, you know, w w a few of our events, like we have love retreat, we've done it seven times. It's the same experience every time. And I really sat with, which is what I'm playing with actually this year. And if, if I decide to keep my mind here, this is what I'm going to do is keeping hair love, a signature experience where, you know, you're going to get like, I don't know. Did we do, I think, yeah. Yeah. You did in Zion where we do the wall breakdown and then you put the thing on the wall with the candles and the stars. Yes. So that's a signature hair love thing we've done every year, except for last year. Um, and which I loved last year it was freaking epic, but having these signature things like that and hiking experiences. And I have, you know, there's some other things that we've done that have been kind of plug and play signature, like you could come and do every time. And no matter where you're at in your business, you would just have a different experience based on what, where you're at. And then the only thing that would change would be a few business segments and a few hair, but the signature hair love experience would be, you know, kind of like his, like you go and you walk over coals. Like it's kind of that same concept every time. And I'm excited about that. And that's what I'm placing this year into what have been the most transformative aspects of the work we've done in the hair love signature way and crafting those around those things and then just changing out those few kind of based on what's what's needed in business what's needed in hair because those are changing but the rest is like a container of the same you know what I mean oh yeah. and yeah. doesn't that I, I'm like that's I think that's that's what feels like. Yes, that makes sense. It totally makes sense because those are the things that are the most impactful and changes lives. Yeah, yep. exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Like, like the, like the, 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 the hair and the, in the business is like the icing on the, uh, on the totally. cake. Right. Yeah. Totally. yeah. You get that, but that's not what it's about. And that's also, no. I have to imagine that's, that's a marketing nightmare from you too. Right. Which part? Well, that, that, that the hair in the business is the icing on the cake, but, but, but the cake, the cake is, is, is the stuff that's like intangible. I know hair love. That's why part of why we made a movie is we're like, how do you explain hair love? Like, it's like, it has to be felt. And that is kind of a funny thing to market. Derek was actually telling me, and this is good for anyone in business is he, he said, you know what, Elizabeth, you always, you know, as I grow as the CEO, I have to like have spreadsheets and team and all the things in order to serve people the way we want to serve them. But he's like, it's important that you always come back into your magic of that wild, crazy little girl who had a bad idea to change. Like it's a bad hair love is a bad business idea. It's a good heart idea. It's a terrible business idea. Right. And, but it's amazing. It's changed my life. It's changed the industry. And he's like, coming back into your magic is like getting out of the mind and coming into the body and coming into your heart and just being like, you know, how is it? And that's how I, I was like, what is it that I want to cause transformation with? Fuck the 
details, the how to the spreadsheets, the budgets, the logistics, like what is it you want to do? And when I come into those moments, that's where I was like, it's the signature core experiences. It's the signature core experiences that cause like transformation, build community, those things. And I think that's a thing, you know, when we're growing in our business and we're getting into all the logistics, because we have to drop back into heart for a moment and check back in, right? With your, why did you start hair in the first place? Why did you start this salon in the first place? Why did you start this podcast in the first place? Like, what was it that sparked that? And that spark is part of your glitter, your magic, your, you know, your, your potion for part of your why. And that, that was good for me. Derek, like showed me a picture of me as a little girl. And he was like, her, she knows she's, she has wild ideas, you know? <laughs> What a great, what a great partner. Yeah. I know. And as much as we love uh, Jeff, we also love Derek, you know, like we oh, are. Yeah. Yeah. Like we had like, uh, we had a real heart to heart with Derek last year. You know, we recorded, we recorded a podcast, which I highly recommend like the podcast that we did with Jay. Cause, cause it was three oh, guys sitting around talking about, you know, masculinity and misogyny and how, how that impacted us. So, you know, go back to hair, love um, radio and uh, you know, listen to that one that we did, but, but what was cool about that and what people didn't at home didn't know is that Derek was in the room for that conversation, you know? And like, and, and he was a, uh, and we had a we had a long conversation after that conversation. About yeah, that's what I was say. Even though the podcast stopped, the conversation conversation kept going, and it kept going, and it got deep. Yeah, you guys need to record that with him, like and Jay and Derek again on your show. Like that's a because that was one of that was such a good episode on our show. Like was, you got it. It it was it was. I don't know if we can recreate it. And here's why is because we had just come out of breath work. So, you know, you're kind of like, you're kind of like breath work stoned. Yeah. You do it. Like if we didn't come out of breath work, I don't necessarily know if that's where the conversation goes, but, but I think what breath work does is like, and Tony brought it up earlier is that it kind of like your soul's vulnerable, but acceptingly vulnerable. And, and I don't necessarily know that, 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 conversation could again be repeated unless we're coming out of that breath work again if we could like create that well, that could be that could be arranged <laughs> right <Yeah. laughs> well for sure and uh, i again if you're listening in i highly recommend uh, the breath work that, that that elizabeth and derek do because um as i mean derek i'll speak for i'll speak for derek for just a sec but correct me if i'm being a jerk or whatever but is that um sure. you know <laughs> no, derek talks about how breath work like saved everything about him you know, and, and, and you can see it like, like Derek's the other one that ha as we've gotten to know through the years, we kind of see that same transition or that same with him as well. So it's not just Elizabeth and her crazy ideas, creating this transition. Like it happened with Derek too. And, 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 and Derek stands in that of how breath work has, has changed his life, your life as a couple, your life together. Cause I, I, well, I'm not going to, yeah. So that, and now they're getting married. So, you know, that's right. breath work is <laughs> leading to a marriage. Right. You should, Literally, you should totally do your reception as breath work, dude. Well, uh, you know, you listen to that song, you know. Um, <laughs> the that is part of though, you know, why do we do the personal development in the business development? It's because there are so many opportunities for incredible business education and hair education. That I mean, hell, I sell business education for a living, so obviously I believe in it, and we bring hair educators in and. But when you pair the personal and the breath work and all of that, you know, well-being and spirituality with that, you are so much more open. You are so much more creative. You're so much tapped in. It's like, okay, let's talk about the nervous system here. Your nervous system, which will be perfect leeway into what we're actually talking about today, which is wealthy well-being. Your nervous system, when it is in a contracted state, you're feeling pressure in the body, you're feeling stress, you're feeling, everyone knows that feeling, right? So it shifts into a survival state. And what happens is when you shift into a survival state, is your body's so intelligent, it sends out all these signals to the body to keep you alive. Thank you, body, right? So hormones change, heart rate changes, breath changes, cortisol pumps through the body. All these things happen to keep you alive. Are you really being, maybe is your life really being threatened? Probably not in that moment, right? But you might be stressed or anxious or worried about money or, or a client or all of the things, the same chemical experiences happening inside as if you were running from, let's say a dog or something. So in that state, when you're stressed out, so let's say you are 
I'm going to make content today. I'm going to open a salon, whatever the hell you're doing, right? I'm going to do this thing. And you're just in a really stressed out pressure state in your body. You do not have full access to logic, reason, creativity, personal power. You are not free and clear in that moment. So what's happening is you're only working with a tiny bit of what you have left and you have to muster through, use willpower and use force to get it to happen. Can you do it? Absolutely. When you are in that state, the body literally strengthens arms and legs, right? Like think about like if you were in a state where you actually had to run, your body's like send all this energy and blood to these extremities so she can run or fight, right? When you're in a fight place and then you go to hustle, you're, you're going to do it, but from a different state where you're not free and clear. So when I can shift someone's nervous system into feeling really safe, really open, really relaxed in a recovery state, what happens is they have access to all of them. They have access to personal power, creativity, all the downloads, all the ideas. They have access to logic, reason. They're thinking free and clear and light. And they are working with so much more of their own personal potential that would, then we go into a really cool class oh my gosh, not only is this being absorbed differently and sticking with you differently, creating new neural pathways in your mind as you're learning new things, but you are literally like, why are businesses revolutionized? Like if I were to sum up the scientific reason of why does hair lab cause transformation, that's why we put you in these environments that curate transformation, expansion, growth, exponentially and you're in that frequency and in that space for not one hour not one day but like the bigger part of a week and so your body gets like regulated to this frequency to this way of being to this openness this connectiveness and so it's like whatever your intended intention was for what you came with you're going to get that times two like you're going to get that time so much more and because everyone comes in for a different reason, right? Like, of course, obviously. And so that's the like nervous system scientific reason of why so much transformation is caused in environments like that and why I, I don't do it like a normal hair show or something, and which are great. I love hair shows, but you know what I mean? Like are we, we want to cause deeper, deeper transformation. You know what, you just explained something eloquently that I've been trying to explain what hair love is. Um, and that is that um, in, when you're not in the room, this is what I say about it is I go, you know, like, like Elizabeth has done an amazing job of like, is, is combining the woo woo with the real practical. Right. Like, here's how we have to practically do our business. Oh, and here's a little woo woo. But but you've kind of like, here's why, like you said, here's why it impacts because you, you're better to accept the practical if if we live in the woo woo for a little bit first. And like, um, I know with our experience, um, well, every every morning of hair love, there's either like a yoga or there's a breath work or there's some kind of something going on in the morning, which then better allows you right to, before breakfast, right before breakfast. Exactly. Yeah. You don't want to do it on, on a full tummy. And we, we can talk about the food at another time because the food at hair love is also extraordinary. However, um, back to the, back to the point is that, is that you experience these things so you can better absorb the day. And yeah. there's not a lot of distractions at Hair Love either. Like, it's like, okay, here's why we're here. This is the purpose of it. And um, and actually, if there if there are distractions, then it kind of feels gross and out of place. And Papa Jeff's the yoga instructor. Who knew that? I mean, he was phenomenal. I mean, I didn't know or realize that I would be kind of a uh, liking the yoga. But I, I look forward to every morning uh, of, of that week. I mean, whether it's yoga, breathwork. I mean, I was there sharp. I mean, it. It was incredible. And you, you mentioned something about the wealthy well-being. Can you yeah. elaborate that on, a little bit more? Yeah. So it's a curriculum I teach that's inside of my masterminds. It's a lot of concepts we teach at Hair Love. Um, I've taught at corporate schools. I just taught it at hair shows. You know, A, I think I am in the business of pioneering things. I think it's my path in life. I was like one of the first to like be like, I want to start teaching more social media and business in the industry to help people with that side. And, and then now, of course, um, that has been so beautifully normalized and accessible in our industry, which is such incredible process where I, you know, 
understand the importance of our well-being, our wellness, our personal development, our spiritual development, our healing, especially as what we do in our line of work. And so wealthy well-being is a really um, great, which we'll teach, I can teach some of it here on the podcast. It's basically teaching people that their wellness is part of the bigger picture of their health and their wealth and their business success, right? We think about um, okay, the finances, the craft, the business, so important. Like one cannot live without the other, but your well being is the container that holds it all. You are the container for your business. Your level of health is your wealth because you're the one who is literally the vessel, the channel for your business. So who here can be like, oh, when I'm burned out, are you of the highest good? Are you making the most money possible in a way that is sustainable? No. Are you being a great husband, wife, human on top of service leader in your business behind the chair? Absolutely not. And maybe you can do it for a little bit, but then it starts to affect you mentally, emotionally, physically, all of the ways. And so your well-being that's, that's your container. That's how long you can be in this industry. That's how long you can help people. That's how long you can make sustainable money. And so it's like, this is the most important thing that we can learn to do. And so what I shared was a understanding that our nervous system health is crucial in any industry, but very much so in this industry, because we are impacted. We are heart to heart, head to crown. Like you are literally in people's field constantly. And I would be hard and fast to see someone argue with me that that doesn't take a physical, emotional, and mental toll on them at some point. And what if there are tools that could help you be well longer, more sustainably, so you can do the thing that really causes transformation. And so this is like, you know, my big core mission and why I infuse it into everything. Sometimes I have to put um, vegetables in a fruit smoothie so it can be digested. Right. And I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to, um, I'm in fact, I'm thrilled to teach you the benefit of putting the vegetables in the fruit smoothie, which means science. Okay. We're going to do spiritual things. This is why, regardless of what you believe, regardless of what you practice, this is the understanding of how your mind and body works. And if you can utilize your technology in the best way, you get to tap into your full potential. You get to unlock your full potential and do what is whatever you're called to do in this life, in this career, in your business, with your family. And um, so I was able to teach and have been teaching so many people about their nervous system and tools to help regulate that and be well so they can event service and impact you know mm, i love it there, there's a um there's a i'm gonna mess the story up so if anyone's listening and please email me with the correct story but 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 the world's greatest samurai fighter like um and he had like a bazillion kills or something like that but but he very much believed in like a, a fulfilled life right he believed that he believed that to be the best samurai fighter he also had to be the best calligraphy or guy and to be the best calligraphy or guy then he had to be the best like yoga guy and to be the best yoga guy he had to be the best at the, and not the best as being the best but but being the best for you you know and he believed that it wasn't just about this machoism this this like wrestling technique this whatever that that created it was all of it it, it, it was it was the complete him and understanding his artist side his his meditation side his 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 anger side his 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 every side in understanding that like marcus aurelius if if you're not familiar with him uh uh he wrote a lot of books are written for the reader right he was writing his personal journal and it, it, he was writing it for the writer and basically he, you know he here he is the emperor of rome or, or or whatever and he's writing why meditation is important he's writing all the things that he needs to do to be a better human being and it's everything that kind of like what what elizabeth is talking about it's all personal growth personal development how can you be a better leader how can you be a better you know person and, and a better lover a better husband a better father better you know uh wife it's just all these things that he was writing he was writing for the writer for himself to better himself and it's very similar to what you were saying so uh, if you get a chance to to read his book it, i mean it, he wrote it about 150 ad uh so it's, it's one of the oldest books still that's been passed down for some reason that it, it it's it's amazing but if you get a chance marcus aurelius it but it's it's pretty pretty. Powerful. What's amazing about that is like talk about the human experience a little bit. Is that 
we've got all the tools right totally. they've been written about for centuries like it's just weird like in the human experience how we all have to experience it before we can experience it it's yeah. so bizarre to me you know <laughs> like if you listen to all the great philosophers and the great writers from from early on they have all the answers you know like why why haven't we evolved knowing that stuff we right? okay because we came here to experience ourselves we came here to have a human experience and so that's why in spirituality and healing they call it remembering you know all these things innately right the body is intelligent whether you believe you know you get one life or many lives but it's like you have these inner knowings these inner intuition this connective consciousness to other things so why do so many why will have why do things trend why do people have the same idea at the same time well there's collective consciousness that we're all on a certain wavelength and frequency so depending on what frequency you're on you pick up on those different things and so it's part of our human experience to remember and to experience it we came here to have a human experience and so it's like we wanted to have the breakthroughs we wanted to learn we wanted to go through it and that's why it's important that we you know, see, it's not getting to an end destination. It's to enjoy the journey. You came here to have an experience. So enjoy the fucking experience, you know? But but if we learn from that, like if, if we could innately like pass that on, like if you can innately pass on all those lessons to Strider, right? Then that means that his journey is different, right? I mean, yes. you know, so like we he, start he, at different his places. journey is just, yeah. a, just, just further down the road, you know? It's just it's it's just interesting. It's always been interesting to me, like like how these yeah. great philosophers. Have, anyways, that that's a great way to put it. Like um, is just yeah, we're here for the journey. I, I like yeah. Or the, or the human and even journey. and for Strider, it might be easier because he was right. It's generationally like think about it. Um, it's our programming. So it's like if I was taught, which I was, a lot of programming around being broke and scarcity. So I have done a lot of work to subconsciously rewire that and teach him that, but he's still going to have to go through embodiment and learning and experience. But is he starting at a higher playing field? Totally. Because he's not being told all the time. Um, like he, this is actually interesting um, and how mind and nervous system work. He's being taught at school that it's hard to be rich which is really interesting. And we've had lots of talks about it over dinner and he goes, but mom, it's, it, I think it's bad to be rich because there are people with money who do bad things. And so we've been processing that. And I'm like, and there are people with money who do really good things. And, you know, money has the power that we give it. It's neutral. It's just an energy. It's it, the power is in the hand of the beholder. And it's like money is not hard. Business is not hard. It's the stories that we create around it that make it hard. Getting online and speaking your truth, it's not hard. You press a button. You feeling safe, speaking your truth and selling, that's all the energetics. That's all the personal work. Like, could I teach you? Yeah. Go live once a week, post every day. The algorithm favors showing up, post these times, check your fucking statistics. And it's not that hard, right? It's not that hard. Do it. Well, why aren't you doing it? Why aren't you doing it? Right? Like work out, eat healthy, drink what? Well, why aren't you doing it? And so it's like the knowing and the embodiment of these things is so different it's like because we have resistance and that's okay and so that's where our personal development comes in in our business and our finances it's not the money it's the way we relate to money it's our relationship with money all right um, and, and for anyone that's listening in, we've brought up Strider. Strider is Elizabeth's son. And, and, and you know, like, it, it's funny that we started off talking, or in the last couple minutes, we've, we started off talking about wealthy well-being. And, and to me, wealth is always meant to pass that on, right? It's not like being rich can just be like, how much money can you bring in? But wealthy is to being able to, uh, being able to pass that on. And, you know, if we follow that up with the well-being, like what you gave Strider in those conversations is not the wealth of money, but the wealth of well-being, right? Like, like because you have money, you, whatever you do with it, I like how you said the money is neutral, you know, that's, that, that, that that's, that, that's pretty. Generational like, well-being. That's I it. I love it. <laughs> Generational well-being. Yeah. So this is fun. You talked about moms and passing down our wisdom and things like that. We do. So we co-regulate each other's nervous systems, which is why helping hairdressers understand this matters is because they're impacted positive or negatively by their clients. They also impact their clients positive or negatively. Think about um, your dog when you are feeling anxious, your dog hugging you helps co-regulate your nervous system and calm them down. 
practice we do in breath work, if someone's going through an emotional expression, sometimes we just let them do their thing. But if I want to help regulate someone's nervous system, I can just sit by them. If I am regulated and I can just breathe or I can place a little bit of pressure on their back or do something, I can help regulate their nervous system. Uh, so it's very powerful. And we obviously, if a baby's in your mother's in the womb, you are creating their nervous system. And as parents in the house, like we help set the tone of what is, what are the parents' nervous systems like? And how is that shaping the child? Like if your dad is really, he's making you feel scared all the time because his anger is really bigger than everything else in the room, that's going to cause an experience in the child's nervous system, which is then going to shape and create neural pathways in their body, which is then right. Keeping them at a certain state in their experience. And later they get the opportunity to kind of regulate that and heal that. And so it's like, we do generationally impact other people's nervous systems. Like I am shaping Strider's nervous system to feel different than how mine did as a child. And he's going to be so much more powerful and ahead in things. Right. And he gets to build on that himself. But, um, so we do, we generationally can create wealth and well-being, and it's hairdressers. We obviously can also impact our clients in a positive way and protect ourselves. Um, I think the biggest thing, well, we'll get into that in a second, but I want to know your opinion on, um, what do you think of that? Uh, I, I believe it, what you just said wholeheartedly, because that was my mission, uh, as being a father, I didn't know how to put it in words or describe it the way you described it. But I knew the way I grew up and the way that my experience, it, just being a son uh, and not having a father um, and then growing up in an environment that was so toxic. And when my wife and I decided to have children, I knew what I didn't want for my kids. I knew, um, what I was lacking. So I knew what to give and how to, I knew, um, the unconditional love that my mom had for me that I knew how to love my wife and my children, uh, mm. unconditionally. You know what I mean? They, they were, uh, they came before me, uh, 100% every day, all the time. And, and Corey can tell you that to the point where I was, a little overbearing, like even my relatives, like, all right, be careful playing with Skyla because her dad might be a little crazy, uh, just because I was so overprotective. But it, it, but what was incredible, but to to my daughter has two two children herself now, and she appreciates the way she knows that I love her grandbabies the way I loved her, and 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 she so appreciative of that. And just, you know, just me thinking about it, it just it's touching my heart right now. But just that's how I I just love them because I knew what not to do and 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 I felt the unlove or I felt abandoned. I felt, you know what I mean? So it was just so everything you just spoke is it, I just didn't know how to describe it, but I believe in it one hundred percent. You know, you brought up a good lesson there, and I think that I'd like to point it out because I think it's so powerful, is that a lot of times in life people ask, you know, what do you want to be or where do you want to be? And I think that's a really hard question because I don't think a lot of us have enough experience to know where we want to be or what's going on, but it's so much easier to define what you don't want to be. And if you can create a barrier for what you don't want to be, what you want to be will happen, you know, mm -hmm. because you just don't, I don't want to be this. And, 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 and I have a similar story with Tony where I grew up, I have a similar opposite story of Tony mm -hmm. as to where I grew up with the father, but my father relationship was incredibly toxic, you know, in my, in my house. And, 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 like I, and my daughter will tell you like her, she's 30 now and I've never raised my voice at her. Like I've never thought that I needed to do this. Um, and I never thought, and I was always scared to become my father in a weird way. So I also thought that if I raised my voice or if I yelled at her, that I would slip into who he was. And again, to the same point, like I knew what I didn't want to be. And I will tell you, I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily know if it was the greatest thing to do. I don't necessarily know if it was the best thing, but it was a way to protect myself. And like, as I've gotten older, what's most important to me is to protect my peace, you know? And, and, and it's actually funny. I'll bring this up and then we can move on from it. But, um, but, uh, 
I, somebody was like, dude, you're so fake at times. And like, I was like, if protecting my peace is fake, I'd rather be that because nobody <laughs> ever, nobody's ever said you're so fake and not have anger within themselves. Right. Because if there wasn't that anger within themselves, then there is no pointing fingers. Or if there wasn't that anger within themselves, they would understand the path that I'm on. You know, yeah. what I am on is, is peace. So if that comes off as fake, if that comes off, I'm okay with that. I would much yeah. rather be at peace or I would much rather be faking at peace than in real and be angry. Right. Yeah, you're like, peace feels pretty real to me, man, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I also understand, I yeah. mean, Tony being my best friend, I also, I also, I'm throwing you in the book. I also understand what not being peaceful is. Mm -hmm. right yeah and, and that's and that's 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 not where i want to live anymore that's part of my evolutionary path is that i just want to be peaceful man and and for me peace is like with a smile and a hug and to welcome you in mm, that makes sense yeah that makes sense i think this is what i'll say this and i think we should give people some tools for their nervous system i think that would be yeah, really let's cool. do it. yeah that's why we brought you on here Elizabeth. yeah i know but i want to <laughs> i want to share this is i think okay if we can identify this is the life coach me if you can identify what you don't want take that as a powerful like okay this is what i don't want to be this is what i don't want to feel and don't pour your in like focus into how can i not be this pour your focus into curiosity of what would be different what would be right it's opposite it's counter what is it that i do want so i think it's great to identify that so like okay when i feel these these are my signals showing me ooh, not not the experience i want to have or the way i want to be but and then we get to be curious about what we do want and explore from that place which sounds like it's what you did in your life but i think it's even in business like i caught myself for years being like i just don't want to be stressed i just don't want to be stressed i just don't want to be stressed instead i started to go okay I want peace. I want recovery. I want this. I want that. Right. And like you did, you start to look for what might feel like that. Cause I may not know it yet. Right. So I'm like, well, I don't know that feeling. I'd like to, I'd like to get to be acquainted with that. What could it look like? And that's been really um, powerful for me, but I would love to share nervous system tools. Can we do that? Let's do it. Okay. So it actually comes, of course it comes full circle. So Remember I shared about the conversations I was having after the documentary and the TED, yes? So something interesting happened that dawned on me so, so big. A few years ago, I, you know, it's 20, in 2020, I began my journey of trauma-informed work and learning, being a student of this work. So I've been through, I'm still in programs and trainings and schooling and probably will be for a long time. So everything from, you know, neuro linguistic programming to trauma informed to somatic work, to breath work, to hypnotherapy, to, you know, all of these understandings and practices, parts work, trying to understand how personal spiritual development works, modalities that work, experiencing in myself, journey work, all of this healing. And I learned tools in that, that were for protecting the facilitator right? Because if you're going to hold that type of space for someone, you're going to dive into those murky waters with someone. How do you do it and be okay? How do therapists sit there all day and hear people's terrible shit and be okay? Well, there are tools specifically for that. And when I learned them, I started integrating them into sacred stylists because I thought hairdressers are unqualified therapists that are thrown into the lion's den to do this whether or not they understand and no one fucking teaches them how to do this and i have been on a mission to in the middle of all these other things i'm teaching them on healing their nervous system and being well and creating business from wholeness and financial sovereignty is you have to learn these tools to protect yourself if you want to feel really good in your body and you want to care for your nervous system right and so that's what i've been teaching and i'd love to share some of those and I wrote on my vision board the end of last year, I made some really, my Saturn return ended and I didn't, I'm not an astrologist by any shape of the words, but I, I learned a lot about myself through it. And your Saturn return is kind of like a midlife crisis. We go through a few in our lives, look up when yours were, cause you might look at your timeline and go, Oh shit. Cause we go through um, two or three in our lives and literally Corey, you guys are going to die. I had so many things let go of me, like things just be like, 
not align, not align, not align, not align, not align relationships. And not even in a, some of them were hard and some of them were like, just, they just needed to happen. Right. Like people in my company, um, I salon, I got my implants out inside of my body. I mean, just so I left, I put my paperwork in to leave the church officially. Like I had, um, I am no longer a, uh, ambassador for Redken after six years, like just so many big things that were a huge part of my life. It was just, was creating so much space. And in this space, I said, I don't know what's coming. I just don't know what's coming. And I'm going to do something that old me would have done, but I'm not going to do it. Old me would have filled the space back up. She would have been terrified of the space and said, it's not safe for there to be space, for there to be the unknown. And she would have hustled, got a new ambassadorship right away. She would have done all the things, right? Wouldn't have sold the salon, would have replaced. It's like when you have a toxic relationship and you just replace it with another one, right? And I said, no, there's something that wants to come through. And if I don't give it space to be birthed, to be shown to me, I won't be able to receive it. This is part of my initiation to this next level of my life. I'm going to let the space. And I did lots of nervous system regulation while things just left, 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 left. And I wrote on my board, I will help millions of people generate wealth while honoring their well-being. I don't know how. I don't know when, I don't know where I'm already doing this, but I, how am I going to impact millions? I mean, that's like a big number. And I just said, it doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't matter how you're going to find out how, like, you don't have to know how, like, let God higher power, like surprise and delight you and bring opportunities that you couldn't even dream of. And some of these ways I can't speak about right now, because they're in the middle of creating them, but things started coming into my life that I thought, oh my gosh, of course, this is how millions of people are going to be impacted. And I never would have thought of it. And so I started doing this. And then all of a sudden, outside of my own work and my own retreats, I've been getting more opportunities to share this curriculum that I'm going to share with your people with our nervous system. And it's, it's just really important. And every time I'd show the documentary, someone would come up to me and use the words, my hairdresser is my therapist. And for me, I know they meant it in a good way. I know what that feels like. And I thought, this hairdresser needs your tools. This hairdresser needs tools that help them because they are thrown into this therapist role. And it's a problematic thing that is also a beautiful thing, right? It's a beautiful thing that people love us and trust us. And we are, like I say in the TEDx, the safe keepers for life's greatest moments. We are there for all of them. And what if the hairdresser had tools to protect themselves better? They could honor their wealth and their well being for so much longer, so much more sustainable. And so every time I hear that the hairdresser is my therapist, I, fueled my mission even more to be like, and I'm going to give every fucking hairdresser that will open their ear to it an opportunity to learn some tools that they can have in their medicine cabinet for themselves for the rest of their lives. So they can do the thing they do, which is change life. So isn't that interesting? Dude. Yes. Very. I'm so, it's so, so very cool. And I think this is, this talks about Elizabeth a little bit too. It's like, she learns these things and then she shares these things, right? She, she does her retreat. She spends the thousands of dollars that it takes to learn these lessons. And then, and then she pays it forward to the industry. So, I mean, uh, speak about a conduit into the industry, you know, bravo again, Elizabeth. All right, dude, you've got, I'm on my, the edge of my seat. What are these? What okay. Are these? Tools. Okay. Let's so go, we, we have to start with protection. We have to start with protecting ourselves. And so, you know, this is where we get to mix ancient principles into modern day business. We live in a modern day world. Can we take these ancient principles? I didn't create these principles, right? These are principles, but like you said, they've been around forever. Can we infuse them into our life? So the first principle is the art of holding space. I have an entire episode actually went out. I know the episode won't go out your episode today, but May 22nd, if you go back to my podcast, I have an entire episode on how to do this, but holding space, I'm going to give you the 30 second version. So you can take this nugget is you do not have to fix your client. 
You do not have to fill the space constantly, energetically in your communication. This is one of the most profound things that when I've taught my hairdressers this, this is a concept they teach therapists. This is a concept they teach trauma-informed workers. This is a concept they teach breath work facilitators. This is important for us. When you're holding space, think of the container of your chair and you get to have this like lean back energy and just be the container. You don't have to get all emotionally, mentally, physically, energetically wrapped up in Susan Bob Bill's shit because it takes a toll on your nervous system. And when you find yourself getting an activation in the body, I want you to lean back, physically lean back your body and create space. And I want you to breathe in through the nose and I want you to breathe twice as slow out through the mouth. What this does is this starts to calm your body down. And I want you to think the phrase release when you exhale. This is a hypno trick and it works amazing. So you breathe into the nose. You could even think, breathe golden light. Exhale, think release. When you feel an activation in your body that isn't pleasurable and it feels like pressure or anxious, anything like that, your job is to care for your vessel. Physically back up. And use your breath as medicine to create space in the body and release. You do not have to, I don't have to fix my client. I don't have to have the right thing to say. I don't have to, oh, tell me more, tell me more. Let's text him back. And I'll give you some language cues to use that help honor your client and acknowledge them without getting wrapped up in their shit. And so that is the first thing is the art of holding space. Listen to that podcast episode. It's so important. You're holding the container, but you don't have to be all up in it energetically, emotionally, physically. It takes a toll on your nervous system, which then takes a toll on your physical health and your mental health. And so this is, you don't have to believe in anything spiritual to practice these concepts. It doesn't matter. It's working with the science of how your body works. So that's a very simple, quick way to explain that. Um, the other thing that so when people do hands-on work if you were to do reiki massage therapy um energy work when i do breath work hands-on i am clearing my energy after i am aware that i am impacted by other people's energetic fields you can google this all you want and see all the science about it like you are impacted by that other person clearing your energy daily when you come in and when you leave make it part of your practice because as hairdressers, we're like, oh, we're just doing hair. No, you're touching someone else's field. You're in their emotional field. They're in yours. You're impacting each other. So have clearing practices that are not just, yes, in communication, I'm holding space. I lean back. At the end of your day, this could be as simple as a walk, moving your body, expelling. So emotion is energy in motion, energy in motion. And we have, you might probably remember this from science class in high school, energy cannot be created nor destroyed, but it can be transmuted and transformed. And so pain can be transcended into pleasure. It cannot be destroyed. The energy is, it all exists. All the energy already exists, right? I don't know if you remember this from science class in high school, energy cannot be created nor destroyed, but you can clear, move, adjust. So at the end of your day, movement, move your body. Why do animals shake when they're stressed? Because it regulates their nervous system. If you watch an animal that was just chased by another animal, right? It was stressed out. When it gets to safety, it will vibrate and shake its body because that discharges the stress from the body and regulates the nervous system. So that's why moving your body, it can be as simple as a, they call it on TikTok, hot girl walk. Go for a hot girl walk, a hot guy walk, a hot human walk, whatever the fuck you want to call it. So go for a walk, move the energy through the body because you're discharging what's other and not of you, what's other, not of me. And I'm discharging it out of my body, out of my mental field, my emotional field. So I can be clear, move your body, shake, super simple, can be done in the car. If you walk home, great. If you drive home, this is your opportunity to shake in the car. The other thing you can do is sing when you sing. So this is really cool. One of the first things that is formed when you are in mother's womb is the bottom of the jaw and below down by the pelvic bone. So you have what's called a vagus nerve that runs all the way down by all your major organs that when you stimulate that, it calms your nervous system down. So when you sing, when you hum, when you chant, when you do this, it 
vibrates through your body and it calms you down. That's why singing in the car feels good. That's why humming feels good. That's why singing in the shower feels good. It literally does shift your state. It calms your nervous system down. Sing your ass off on the way home, but add in the intention of being free and clear. When you start adding an intention, intention, thought then creates emotion in the body, which then creates, right? My human experience, which then shapes my nervous system. When you add intention, I'm not just going to the gym because it feels good. Oh, it feels good. Well, why? It's moving emotions through my body. It's moving energy. It's, a, it's changing my state. Add intention to your workout. Add intention to singing. Add intention to when you shake. So those are going home tools. We talked about tools when you're behind the chair. And then protect yourself before you walk into the room. Because what happens if you don't choose to protect yourself is you're open to be hijacked. What happens when the first thing you do in the morning is watch the news? You say, the new day, who'd like to program my mind? Who would like to interject some fear, some opinion, some projection into my field? Well, I would like you to be the one to be sovereign over your own experience in life and to be the first one to interject, protect, and intend into what your experience is, what you'd like protect yourself, ask to be free and clear, ask to protect yourself with golden light to wrap your, the zip up technique, right? Everyone's heard of the zip up technique, visualize yourself being zipped up the same way you can think about being stressed out. The thing you are having anxiety about thought then creates, there's a second part of your brain creates a chemical shoots down to your nervous system. That chemical creates emotion. Now you're having the experience of anxiety in your body. It works the exact opposite way. I'd like to have protection. I'd like to be free and clear. Visualize yourself wrapped up with that and intend for yourself to know what is other and not of me. What is other and not of me? Then at the end of the day, what's other and not of you gets to go, gets to be wiped away, washed away, wash your hands, take a shower. So you're free and clear and you get to have an evening that isn't hijacked by Susan's horrible boyfriend that she told you all about. And now your nervous system is still experiencing some leftover frustration that's lingering. That's not your energy. Discharge it, move it through. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's your like three was, hour lesson in 10 minutes. Right. <laughs> You know, what's interesting is that um, you're talking about movement and um, you articulated it again. Like when, we, when, whenever we do a bunch of podcasts back to back, particularly like hair shows and stuff, like after each podcast, I just have to get up and move. Like I've got to, and, and I kind of, and, and I've always kind of thought of it as like the ginger with your sushi, right? Like clearing the palate, you know, um, to get yes. to the next conversation. So um, it's interesting that, that I didn't, I didn't know why I had to, but I just knew that I had, I, all the time, Tony, right? It's like, yeah. I, I need to go for a walk, you know, like it never made sense to me, but now you've kind of made, you've put sense to it, you know, like, I just, I don't know. I just got to go take just a walk. Got educated. Exactly. I, 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 and they're, they're free. Mm -hmm. These are free tools. These are somatic tools. You have movement, vibration, shaking. You have your voice to stimulate your vagus nerve. And it can be as simple as, ah, ah ooh, E, like that is a somatic tool that helps stimulate the vagus nerve that you could do in the back room or you could take a few breaths. No one can hear a breath if you want to do that. You could adjust these things. You know, when I wash my hands, I say oh, this is like hypnotherapy kind of stuff, free and clear. I am free and clear. And you're like washing away what is no longer yours adding a prayer of protection. Like we used to pray to be safe at night when we were little kids, right? Not bad dreams. Why do we stop praying for protection in morning and night? Why can't we intend for our bodies and our experience protection? But all of these tools are somatic tools that are backed by science work, no matter what, no matter what you think or feel <laughs> like as long as you, if you'll breathe, that's medicine for your body. The intention part matters what you think and feel, and no one can do that for you. You have to work with your own mind in that way and intend for yourself. But the somatic tools are extremely powerful, very simple and completely life-changing. Can I end with a language tool? Yes. Yeah. Okay. A language tool. I'm trying to give you guys the whole information in a quick setting is your language. And here's just a few words to adjust that will add protection for you. 
is simple things like that's understandable. So sometimes that doesn't mean I understand. If you are a salon owner and you're like, someone is late every day and they're like, well, I'm really tired and my boyfriend's an asshole and blah, 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 blah. You're not like, I understand that's acceptable. You're saying that's understandable that that's been going on. Then we move into some solutions. Someone's sharing a political belief that triggers you, you know, in the chair and you don't agree with it, but you can be like, oh, that's understandable that you'd feel that way. And then adjust the conversation into something else. What that does is you're not energetically getting all up in their shit and going, I understand I'm, there's no attachment here. There's no, I, there's no, I, it's like the difference of, I, this is a whole other topic for another day, but like with Derek's depression, when he started to stop saying, I am depressed, I am depression to, I'm experiencing the feeling of depression. He was no longer associating himself with that emotion. So that's understandable that you would feel that way, or that's understandable. Thanks for sharing that. Thanks for sharing your perspective. Those are sort of phrases you can start, you know, bringing in and not having to agree or disagree or be overconnected, even with things that are not that heavy. They're just things that they're sharing. You just start to just listen and lean back. What would it look like to lean back more energetically, mentally, and physically, and just let the client have their own experience? I don't have to fix. I don't have to force. It's understandable. They'd feel that way. It's not even the silence. Like, don't feel the silence. What happens? What mm. happens? You save your energy. Yeah. Preserve a little bit more of your energy and see that the service is still incredible. So you can still hold loving, compassionate space without having to exert and give more than you had to give. Mm, I love that. Yeah. I, mean, uh, I'll, I'll do that a lot. Uh, maybe just my nature, but. I, you know, like if, if I don't want to engage in a conversation, I don't, you know what I mean? And it becomes like kind of a, a silent appoint, appointment almost, you know what I mean? And we, and everybody's just relaxed. You know, what came to mind to me is that, um, and I think this is the gender thing. So that, I hate gender conversation. Anyways, um, like for my wife, when she comes with an issue, like I want to get into fix it mode. Right. And she doesn't want that. Right. Like she just, sometimes she just wants an ear. And by the way, this is a lesson I learned literally just a couple of years ago. You know, she just wants the ear. She doesn't want the fix. But with my clients, I never, I, I kind of, I never feel like I have to fix, you know, like, like, I just kind of like, oh, I like, I, I hear it. I listen to it, but it doesn't, it doesn't carry over with me at all. Um, like, okay, well, I got another client coming in in 30 minutes and then, <laughs> and then, and then, you know, and then I have, you know, that ear for it. But, but, but to that note, I also like. I don't, I, I turned off the news now. I don't watch the news anymore because I just, and it w has nothing to do with the media. It has nothing to do with the news. It has to do with me and that like, whatever, like I heard on the news, like I couldn't let that go, whether it was anger or not. Or here's what I realized again about a year ago was that if I heard a really good point about my view on the news, now I had to go share it with somebody, even if they were on my team, because I had to show them how cool it was. And like, I go, that's kind of a weird thing too. Even like that, that, that validation that I needed um, from that. So but by, by, yeah, he'll come into the shop. I'm like, Corey, that's understandable. I'm sure that way. <laughs> yeah. That makes, um, that makes sense. Is another yeah, one. That makes sense that you feel that way. <laughs> that makes sense. I, I, I have a, I have, I have a mantra, not a mantra, I guess it's a mantra, but like a tool that I use too. And that um, I want to hear try to use that I try to use. And it's kind of the opposite. I think of what you were saying, because you're trying, because what you were saying is like, you don't have to own it. Like the I'm isn't there, but, but, um, but a conversation that I have, particularly when I'm um, stressed out is that um, I tell myself that I am not my thoughts. My thoughts are something that live by themselves. You know, I am not. My no, that's thoughts. great for you. Cause you're saying, I'm not my thoughts. I'm not my body. I'm not my salon. No, that's great. Keep going. That's an incredible tool. Yeah. That, so, I mean, that that's essentially it is like, I am not my thoughts and, and all, all anxiety, all stress, all, all that comes from your thoughts and you, uh, and by having this conversation, you only own it as much as that. Now I'm not going to, there's no way I can tell you that this isn't 
this isn't the conversation all the time, right? Because sometimes when you're so stressed out, you forget to have that conversation with yourself, you know, but I can tell you that if, if you can catch it early on, like, oh, I'm getting spinny in my thoughts. I'm not my thoughts. It's, it's, it's much easier to kind of move away from that conversation with myself as opposed to being in it. Because once I'm in it, like I'll either forget it or it just doesn't have the power that it did early on. So anyway, that's, that's, that's my three cents. So what episode yeah. can they catch if they want to dive deeper? So the holding space one is really good. That just came out. Um, we, I should do one on wealthy well-being. I haven't done one yet. I'll do one. How about that? And then obviously our work, but that's not free to come into that, but that's why I wanted to give those tools, um, today on the podcast, I'll do another one to go deeper, but the holding space one we just barely did with me and Shelby is really great. And honestly, it's sprinkled throughout my podcast. Like if you listen, there's just, it's just said all the time, all those things. That's so awesome. Elizabeth Fay. I, I, t- I tell you this every time I see you, I adore you. I, I, I think that, I think that you're one of the most powerful people um, in our industry. I think you're one of the most powerful people in the world. Um, I, and I don't mean always shedding in- light, always shedding light and also doing it for the right reasons and coming from the right space. And so it's so rare that, that, that we get to meet someone who's generally a, genuinely about that and you know since 2018 since we met you you've, you've always stood in that space and and you've always given it all you know mm-hmm. and 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 i just i i i wish i wish that i was you because i want to be in a space where i can give it all you know and, and i just i adore you so much yeah we love yeah. you we love papa jeff we love Derek. we love all you guys we love uh, hair love retreat yep keep doing what you do because you are def- you're not only changing the world. I mean, I'm, you are changing the world. Uh, you definitely have changed our lives. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. For sure, for sure. And like yeah. you talked earlier, I don't know if we actually recorded it, but you know, you were saying like the ripple effect and and I would argue through that ripple effect, you've already reached millions. Mm-hmm. You know, no. you've reached us and we've been able to like, like That's I said, true. You, you would not believe the con- how many times we talk about Elizabeth Fay behind our chairs with our clients, you know. Yeah. So uh, I almost convinced a client to come to uh, come to your love retreat. There, <laughs> she was super close to doing it. I don't even know why she didn't, but uh, but but she was all about it after the breath work. She's like, I need that in my life. So. Oh. So I, I love that. It, it's pretty dope. All right. Uh, 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 t- sales pitch. Where can everybody find like hair love retreat? Where can they follow you? All that stuff. So. Sorry, Derek has a question. Hi, Derek. Hi, Derek. <laughs> Hi, Derek. Up, Hi, Derek. Okay, so Hair Love Retreat, I'll give you the link. We're doing something special that I think we should tell people about. It's yeah. anyone who registers for this year's Hair Love. If you found us through Hair Distry, we are going to give you, I have a course called Abundance Queen. Don't worry, it's for kings too. <laughs> Abundance Queen and King. It's all about the financial energetics, changing your money story, and then actual spreadsheets for implementing like pricing changes. Anyone who gets it, it's an $1,100 course. You just get it totally for free. If you found us through hair industry and bought your ticket for hair love. So that's kind of a gift from the hair industry boys. And I want to let you guys know this. I think it's really cool is I wanted to give a kickback to the hair industry boys. I said, Hey, if someone buys a ticket through you, I want to pay you, you know, some sort of small kickback for each ticket. And I'll, you know, send you some cash, whatever. And they said, you know what, what we want you to do is we want you to take the money that you would have paid us. And we want you to add it to your scholarship. So hair love has a scholarship, which I think is really freaking cool. And so I just wanted to let you guys know that because I don't know whether or not you wanted people to know that, but I think that that is worth sharing. So I hope it's okay that I told them, but yeah, we, we can edit it's it out. Late. It's fine. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> of course. No, I mean, I mean, and what we talked about, you know, is that, is that hair love changed our lives. Like Tony's brought up um, a few times uh, today, like hair love changed our life. And, and whatever that kickback is, whether you were going to kick us back 10 bucks, whether you're going to kick us back a thousand bucks, it's going to, we would much rather pay into someone else's life change than, than, than for us to have what, like a, a, a dinner. You know what I mean? Like, like that doesn't make sense. You know what, what that money would be used for on our end, but, but the power of what that money can be used for someone who's never experienced it and, and who would, um and who would have just a life changing um experience, you know, like that, that has much more value than, than going out to dinner. Yeah. And it would be more than a dinner to be very clear, but, (laughs) but that is what's great. So thank you for paying that forward to someone else. I mean, I think that that's a really cool, generous, amazing thing to do. And 
it's like paying forward, um, you know, something that's helped you and helped me and we can give it forward. So, so um, what's great is that if you're listening, if you're going to hair love, make sure you mention hair to street. So you yeah, you have to course. mention it. Yes. And we can get add to the scholarship. Exactly. So you're doing two things, um, three things. One, you get to experience the the retreat and knowing that it's, it's life changing Two, you're going to get a, a, a course that's going to change your, your finances and three, you're going to help somebody paint and you're paying it forward. So I know. So it'll just be, um, we'll add on the form. How did you find us? And you just make sure you say that. So we know, and it's going to be so incredible. And then we really chose the course as well. Cause we wanted something that increases your financial well being. So that's something that's like you get a tangible win out of it, right? In a financial way and the energetic. So it's just kind of all the things. It's going to be so good. Oh, that's so awesome. We love you. We do. We do. We do. We do. We do. We do. We, uh, anyways, whatever. So did we tell everyone? So at hairloveuniversity.com is where you can get tickets. Uh, you certainly can look at it at, at Hair Love University on the Instagrams. And certainly, hey, Elizabeth Faye. Uh, oh, I, I, I opened up the podcast saying, are you changing your name? Oh, so we'll end with that. So Faye is actually my middle name. Nice. So, so I, Faye. there you go. What? So yes. forever Faye. I'm forever Faye. And I, um, my first boss told me to go by that name instead of my last name, because he said it's going to change. And he's right. I've been Ankeman Manueli. So I am going to legally change my last name to Derek's last name, Solberg, but my business. Yeah. I'll just be Elizabeth Faye. Hey, Faye. Yeah. But at least Derek doesn't have to be called Mr. Fay at hotels anymore. Cause I'll book it. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, he's like, no. And I'm like, baby, I'm so sorry. So he would love it. Like Mr. And Mrs. Solberg, you know, like that'll be good. That'll you be know, good. you know, when we see him, we say, Hey, Mr. Mr. Fay. <laughs> He's always Mr. Oh, Faye. He's going to be fighting you, dude. <laughs> He'll love it. He'll think it's really funny. Oh, my God. He's going to jump on your back and beat you like right. a chimpanzee. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. Elizabeth, thank you very much. Um, we love you. And uh, we can't. Uh, I, listen, I don't know. I, we can talk all day. We literally have talked all day you know, yeah. as I look at the clock. But it's awesome. So, Miss Elizabeth Faye Solberg, thank you very, very much for joining. Was I the first one to call her Elizabeth Solberg? You what? were. What? Thank you for joining us on your day off. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends, give us a rating and drop a review to listen to all the latest podcasts. Please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet and to stay connected on and off the show. You can follow us at hair Street on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again. And we'll see you next time. Peace and love.